Hi everyone, I'm Sunil Reggae, consultant psychiatrist. Today I'll be talking about turmeric. As many of you know, turmeric is a yellow spice, which is actually part of the ginger family. In the Indian language we call it, well in Hindi we call it haldi, in Marathi we call it halad, and uh, it has been used in Ayurvedic and traditional Chinese medicine um, to treat a wide variety of uh, diseases and conditions. I remember as a kid as well, my mom or my grandparents uh, would often give turmeric, a little bit of turmeric in milk with honey. Uh, turmeric features a lot in Indian food. It's a ubiquitous sort of spice used in Indian meals or meals in the subcontinent. The research that has been conducted has actually shown that uh, the active compounds are called curcuminoids and the main active ingredient to the primary curcuminoid is curcumin. So curcumin in turmeric that potentially has some significant neuropsychiatric benefits. What are the specific aspects where it might help? It firstly reduces glutamate concentration and therefore reduces excitotoxicity as glutamate is the primary excitatory a neurotransmitter. Next, it increases neurotrophin uh, production. And so neurotropins are agents that promote neurogenesis. So we've got neurogenesis and neuroplasticity happening. Next, it dampens this glucocorticoid resistance and HPA axis hyperactivation. And that's beneficial because we know excessive cortisol can affect the hippocampus, memory areas, and can actually lead to excitotoxicity. Next, it improves insulin sensitivity. Now this is beneficial not in the brain, but also overall from a metabolic perspective. Improved insulin sensitivity means decreased insulin resistance, which is of course linked to metabolic syndrome. So that's a good thing if we have improved insulin sensitivity. Next, there's decreased intestinal hyperpermeability. This is linked to that leaky gut. So it actually reduces possibility of leaky gut. Next, it improves mitochondrial function and reduces oxidative and nitrosative stress. It improves endocannabinoid signaling. We know endogenous cannabinoids are closely linked to mood and other functions as well. So curcumin improves this endocannabinoid signaling. Next, it actually restores the kynurenin. You might remember this kynurenin pathway. So it actually restores this kynurenin pathway metabolized ratio. Kynurenin, essentially, we do not want that to go into the production of quinolic acid because quinolic ac acid is excitotoxic. So this actually improves that ratio, reduces uh, the production of quinolic acid. Next, it has anti-inflammatory immunomodulatory properties uh, through a range of mechanisms affecting cytokines, TNF, uh, interferon, etc. Finally, it also improves monoaminergic transmission. And we know monoamines are important aspects in depression. We require adequate amounts of serotonin, noradrenaline, dopamine for optimum mood. And that's what an many antidepressants work through, right? By increasing these monomines. What is the evidence for curcumin in depression? What trials have shown is besides the reduction of depressive symptoms, which it has shown, they've shown that they can reduce depressive symptoms. They also showed anti-anxiety effects, decreased inflammatory cytokine levels, and increased plasma BDNF. Now, BDNF is brain-derived neurotropic factor. A neurotropin promotes neurogenesis. This was compared to placebo. Furthermore, curcumin was used as an augmentation agent, fluoxetine plus curcumin, and the response rate was much better than in the only fluoxetine group or in the only curcumin group. So the numbers were approximately 77.8% fluoxetine plus curcumin, 64.7% in the response in the fluoxetine, and curcumin group was 62.5% group. Now, will turmeric powder intake help? Likely not, because a turmeric ingestion as powder, instinctively we might think might have therapeutic potency, but the curcumin content of pure turmeric powder is only around 3%. Curcumin is generally well tolerated in trials with only mild side effects like yellow stool or headache or diarrhea, noted in doses up to 12 grams a day. Essentially, if I had to summarize this, we've got turmeric used ubiquitously. Uh, it's a spice nowadays in, in, you know, in cooking and it can be added to drinks, for example. But can it be used mainstream as an antidepressant? Well, we don't know. The mechanism needs to be clarified. Uh, the blood-brain barrier passage 
We don't know, most likely it is, it is poor from what we know at the moment. We don't really know long-term side effects at higher doses. Uh, metabolism and bioavailability, we don't know enough. So really, as a mainstream agent, curcumin as such, more research is required to provide those answers. You know, turmeric as a spice has been used for a long time. So of course, I think it's a great addition to food or drinks, for example, to make your curries. And, you know, I think that that is something that will continue. So. I hope that you found this uh, video useful. If you liked it, of course, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel as well. Look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.